I'm Dr. Rebecca Gowland and I'm here in the Human Osteology Lab at Durham University in the Department of Archaeology. Um, I'm a specialist in human bones and uh, what I'll be showing you today is the different methods that we use to create an osteological profile from either forensic or archaeological skeletal remains. During the course of this series we'll be looking at how to determine sex from skeletal remains, how to estimate age at death from infant and juvenile remains as well as adult skeletal remains, how to estimate stature and we'll also be taking a look at some of the pathological lesions that we can see on skeletal remains and how to diagnose and record different pathologies. I'm here in the Human Osteology Lab in the Archaeology Department and this is where we teach um, human skeletal remains to our master's students and our undergraduate students, mostly because they're trying to find out about the way in which people lived in the past, but that techniques that we teach are just as applicable to the forensic context. So here at Durham we've also trained the police, crime scene investigators, we've trained people from a number of international agencies who are seeking to identify individuals from mass graves from their skeletal remains so that they can return those bodies to their loved ones. So the techniques are just the same, it's the context that differs. I'll run through the techniques for creating an osteological profile. The accuracy and reliability of this profile always depends on the preservation and completeness of the skeletal remains that you have to analyse. It also depends on the burial context as well. So for example, in a lot of mass graves you might get a number of individuals buried within that grave and during decomposition the skeletons may become commingled and this can also complicate analysis.